in this video you're going to get a lot of information even this newsletter that I'm adding now after this video has been completely processed one time we had left something out so our father allowed me to go ahead and talk to you guys about this newsletter that our family has been working on for a while now just letting everybody know about the upcoming dates of the feast days you can find all of this information in the description of this video or you can send me an email to in the fight at yahoo.com and I'll put you on the newsletter list and if you are a firstborn make sure you do send me an email because as you see here this first newsletter is a shout out to you guys but anyway let's go ahead and get into the video hey y'all coach in the fight you guys Stacy with me hey y'all and in today's class, we're going to be looking at Ezekiel chapter 38. So real quick, in this video, you're going to hear about the wars, the ongoing wars and the one that has just started from the Bible's perspective, Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39. But during this Bible study, I'm going to be asking the question, is Israel at war? And we'll be talking about some potential causes of this war, again, from Scripture. Turns out it may have something to do with our Sabbath day. So at the end of the video, we're going to be talking about how the sacred calendar works and even offering a visual aid in getting an understanding of how our Father created the celestials, the sun, the moon, and the stars, in order for us to tell time. So make sure you stick around to the end. Go ahead and hit that like button. Be prepared to leave a comment as we go and be prepared to answer the question at the end of the video. Is Israel at war? Mm -hmm. I know it looks a little bit strange there because we're going to be coming out of the Septuagint in today's class. Yeah, it says Ezekiel. I actually decided to use the Septuagint because of a comment I got earlier today pointed me to Amos chapter 6 and verse 3. Yeah. It seems that there's some extra words in this verse mm -hmm. than we see in the King James Version and the other translations of the Bible. This one here in verse 3 is talking about those adopting false Sabbaths. Yes, and in the King James Version of the Bible, those words have been taken out, deleted, or just not put there. Well, it's not just the King James Version. I just clicked on the ASV, just to so that it's anyone. Every one of them is missing the information about the Sabbath day. Very significant information. Yeah. And we plan on covering in another class. So you guys make sure you're subscribed because that is significant. Mm -hmm. uh, many people may work a little bit harder trying to recognize the true Sabbath day if they knew that this was going to cause them to be in line of fire of this so-called evil day. Right. But anyway, we're going to come over here to Ezekiel chapter 38, and we're going to go down through here and hear about the so-called people in the line of fire. Mm -hmm. We're going to basically hear from Ezekiel how it's going to turn out for these particular people. Right. But let's go ahead and get into it. We have a lot of verses to cover here. If you would, would you read there verse one? And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, This is uh, prophecy given to Ezekiel. Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, Rosh, prince of Meshach, and Tubal, and prophecy against him. See, this is what I mean. In, in the second verse, we already see a word that's not included in the King James Version. Right. You see how after Magog, it talks about Rosh. And then over here in the King James Version, we don't even see that word mentioned. Right. But we know that that's actually Russia that it's talking about. Right. So here in the Septuagint, we see that Russia is a key player in all of this, along with these other nations. Right. Like Gog. Who, according to Google search, is Russia. And Magog, according to Google search, is China. So what this is saying is that he's going to set his face against Russia, China, uh, Tubal. And Meshach, who we know today as Turkey. So these are forming the players in what we know as Armageddon. Right. This chapter is all about Armageddon. Right. All right, so let's go on. And say to him, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Rosh, prince of Meshach, 
and Tubal. And looking back over here at the KJV, maybe they're leaving it out because Gog and Russia is supposed to be the same thing. Okay. Maybe, but it does seem a little bit deceptive that we're missing that whole word here. Right. All right, let's go on. And I will gather thee and all thine hosts, horses and horsemen, all wearing breastplates with a great multitude, shields and helmets and swords. So all of these people here, these different groups that make up what we know as the warriors in Armageddon, he says that he's going to gather them. Right. And this is one thing that we have to pick up in this is that they don't have a choice in what they're doing. That he will lead them to the place that he has appointed. Right. Mm -hmm. Persians and Ethiopians and Libyans, all with helmets and shields. Now, Persia is Iran. Yes. You know, and like we said, we're, we're thought about doing this class after the conflicts over there in Israel. Yes. And we know that even though they're using these words like Hamas and, you know, these other countries that we don't really know about or hear about. The real war is between the Jewish people and Iran or the Persians. Yes. Now, we know from our search in Google that the Ethiopians are referred to as Sudan and Egypt. It seems as if the four in verse two are the main players. And what he's saying is that the other nations will be a part of the the battle as well. So the Persians, we know, will be fighting with Russia because of the agreements that they have in place already. Russia, China, and Iran are kind of all in cahoots together. Mm -hmm. But is this saying that Ethiopia and Libya are going to be fighting with them? Google says that the Ethiopians include southern Sudan and Egypt. And I saw in the news that Egypt is also participating in the conflicts that's going on now and they have refused to help Israel but are staying out of it so maybe they're a part of well well it's all just now really getting started right you have Russia who's you know making its battle plans over there in Ukraine right now right they kind of need some access to the water over there so that they could come in over here into the Jerusalem area or what we're gonna find the mountains of this area over here so that they can participate in this fight too so we're in the early stages of this thing but it seems like everybody that's mentioned in scripture is having a part of it even Gomer like we read in verse 6 right who was that for Gomer, Google just says that it is the eldest son of Japheth. So it's another one of the Japheth clan. What about Thorgarma? Probably too, Japheth too? Also a son of Gomer. Okay, so the Japheth clan. All right, um, so let's read on. Gomer and all belonging to him, the house of Thorgamma from the end of the north, and all belonging to him, and many nations with thee. Now these, these words are pronounced a little differently in right. the Septuagint. Be thou prepared, prepare thyself, thou and all thy multitude that is assembled with thee, and thou shalt be to me for a guard. For a guard. So this is interesting. All of the people that he's named up here is going to be for a guard. Right. He shall be prepared after many days, and he shall come at the end of years, and shall come to a land that is brought back from the sword, when are gathered from many nations against the land of Israel which was entirely desolate. And he has come forth out of the nations and they shall all dwell securely. So this is a, a break in time here where up in verse seven, he's kind of introducing, he or he's already introduced the, these key players. Mm -hmm. And now he's saying that he's going to set them aside as a guard. Mm -hmm. And you can read between the lines there that they're going to be a guard for so many years. Until we get down here to verse 8, right. where he's going to bring them in for this war. Now, this is a very important verse, so let's take it a little bit slower here. Like how it says, shall come to a land that is brought back from the sword. And this is one of the things we need to pay attention to here is how it distinguishes the land from the people. If we're not careful, we can mix these up and think that he's talking about a people when he's talking about a land. Or place. This land that he's talking about is the land that was brought back from the sword that was entirely desolate. Right. 
right? Of course, it was desolate after the abomination of desolation, mm -hmm. which we know to be the dome of the rock there placed on the Temple Mount. All of the people under the commandment of our Messiah was told when they saw the dome of the rock being placed on the Temple Mount to leave Jerusalem and never come back. Mm -hmm. They were told to, to leave Jerusalem and never come back. So that's what made it desolate. But then after many, many years, these many nations, see where it says here, from many nations, gathered from many nations, these people from many nations have came to this land. We can't necessarily say return to the land because the, the people under the Messiah was told never to return. Mm -hmm. So this is a different people who has gathered from many nations, not Israel, but they're gathered from many nations to the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. see, how, see, this is tricky. Mm -hmm. I'm spending so much time on this because there's a lot of people wondering right now if Israel is at war. Right. Okay. So let's just let's just go on. I understand we're under a little bit of censorship here. Mm -hmm. So let's just go on. And thou shalt go up as rain and shall arrive as a cloud to cover the land. And there shall be thou and all that are about thee and many nations with thee. So they're about to come in to this land of Israel. Mm -hmm. All of these different warriors that are mentioned above, he says they're going to go up like rain. They're going to arrive like clouds, meaning they're going to be a lot of them. Right. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord God, it shall also come to pass in that day that thoughts shall come up into thine heart and thou shalt devise evil devices. So basically, these people are about to get taken over by evil principalities, mm -hmm. basically something that's going to come in to their mind to have them to come and do a certain destruction. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the rejected land. I will come up on thee that are at ease in tranquility and dwelling in peace, all inhabiting a land in which there is no wall, no bars nor have they doors. Yeah, so we're talking about that place over there they call Israel. Mm -hmm. So these warriors are going to go up to this rejected land where these people have come to dwell from many nations and they're dwelling in tranquility, dwelling in peace over right. there in the Middle East. Inhabiting the land with no walls is saying that Rush and Gog and Magog and Tubal and all of these other People groups are going to come in and surround them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. To seize plunder and to take their spoil, to turn my hands against the desolate land that is inhabited and against a nation that is gathered from many nations that have acquired property dwelling in the midst of the land. You see, see how it's making a distinction here? Mm -hmm. It's telling you that it's about the land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They ain't fighting. It, the, the battle ain't about the people. Right. It's about the territory. Mm -hmm. Sheba and Dadan and Carthaginian merchants and all their villages shall say to thee, Thou art come to plunder, to take a prey, and to get spoils. Thou hast gathered thy multitude to take silver and gold, to carry off property, to take spoils. You know who these people are? Well, Google tells us that Sheba and Dadan is Saudi Arabia and those of the descendants of Iranians. Okay, so the Saudi Arabians are looking at the Russians going, hey, y'all come over here to steal some stuff? Right. Is that what it's saying? That's what it seems as if it's saying. So which side are they going to take? Does it say? It doesn't, it doesn't make it clear which side they are on right. at this point. Right. I, I, it doesn't sound like they're on their side. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to check the news. But I think <laughs> I think um, Saudi Arabia kind of flip-flops a little bit, so. We don't know. One minute they're with Iran and the next minute they're with the U.S. or so back and mm -hmm. forth. But anyway. Therefore, prophecy, son of man, and say to God, thus says the Lord, will thou not arise in that day when my people Israel are dwelling securely? Now, this is the first time it starts talking about the people of Israel. Right. You notice that, right? Yeah. But notice that it says they're dwelling securely. Mm -hmm. That's significant. That is. Okay, let's go on. And come out of thy place from the farthest north and many nations with thee, all of them mounted on horses, a great gathering and a large force. A lot of people. This is Armageddon. 
Hmm. So, you know, and you know, when the Bible repeats itself over that it's trying to make this point of how many people are actually going to show up to this war. Yeah, from the previous verse, talking about how they will seem as if they're rain in a cloud, a, a cloud. covered cloud. And now it's talking about all the people. It's going to be a whole lot of folk. A whole lot of people. And thou shalt come up upon my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall come to pass in the last days that I will bring thee up upon my land that all the nations may know me when I am sanctified in thee before them. Now, you look at this closely. It's talking about the people of Israel again, it seems to be. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Because it's again talking about to cover the land. Right. And again, it talks about the land in this verse here. Right. All right, let's go on. Thus says the Lord God to Gog, Thou art concerning whom I spoke in former times by the hand of my servants, the prophets of Israel, in those days and years that I will bring thee up against them. So I wonder if anybody has ever tried to go over and tell Mr. Putin that all of this is written about him in the scripture. <laughs> I mean, even the other leaders, do they know that they're being led to this war? It says they have a hook in their jaws mm, like a fish. Mm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I wonder, has anybody tried to break this down to him and say, uh, not that I think it would matter, but if you remember the story, Cyrus, King Cyrus, actually saw his name written in the book of Isaiah mm. and took action based on what he read. read. Mm -hmm. yeah. but anyway, let's go on. And it shall come to pass in that day, in the day when God shall come against the land of Israel, says the Lord God. My wrath and my jealousy shall arise. I have spoken in the fire of my anger. Verily in that day, there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. So we we'll look at what all you have here. You have all of these groups, these Armageddon nations that's coming into this land of Israel, surrounding this land of Israel, basically coming to take spoil and to take the people's possession over there in that in that land and in, in, in in the Jerusalem area mm -hmm. when what he says here is that once they get there and have all of this big cloud of people surrounding this area that his wrath is going to come up and there's going to be a great shaking right a great shaking in Israel a great shaking in the land of Israel I should say would that be referred to an earthquake absolutely so this is an earthquake that is going to come and level out these guys army going to level out their weapons going to basically do what we read about in the third testament of the bible and other places where he's going to use the elements mm -hmm. to prove to man that our weapons are juvenile right not really that powerful as we think they are <laughs> when an earthquake and some other stuff comes and basically destroys all of their army and their weapons right so that's what we have to look forward to in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go on. And the fish of the sea shall quake at the presence of the Lord and the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the field and all the reptiles that creep upon the earth and all the men that are on the face of the earth and the mountains shall be rent and the valleys shall fall and every wall on the land shall fall. So now... <laughs> This right here, you've heard me reference this verse many times, but is this saying that the walls over there are going to fall? Because it keeps talking about the land, the land, the land, the land, and now it's saying the wall of the land. Yeah, when I was uh, reading it earlier, I was wondering the same question. Yeah, well, and the word is living. This scripture is alive, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it has a way of... of doing this showing us things when we need to see it the most mm -hmm. and this is very well what this could be telling us is that all of this is going to go on over there mm -hmm. no <laughs> let's go on and i will summon against it even every fear says the lord the sword of man shall be against his brother now you start hearing this kind of stuff in the keys of enoch mm -hmm. it says when this earthquake happens that it's going to cause chaos Right. When Russia is actually prophesied to shoot their nukes off in confusion because of this earthquake. Mm -hmm. They they think they're, they're according to the keys of Enoch, they're severed from the rest of their army. The head is cut off from the body of the army and in confusion they send off a nuke. Hmm. By confusion you mean 
they when the earthquake comes and they really don't know what's going on or right. what to do right. and well they don't know what happened to their troops mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're 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 hearing from millions and millions of troops and then all of a sudden there's silence i guess mm-hmm. and so they think that they've been nuked mm. and so they send one back or something like that mm. but anyway let's go on and i will judge him with pestilence and blood and sweeping rain and hailstones and i will rain upon him fire and brimstone and upon all that are with him and upon many nations with him now i realize this class is getting a little bit long but we really should be talking about what we read in the book of Revelations when it talks about all of this stuff. Hmm. Because this seems like the trumpet's being blown there. Like what we read down there in chapter 8, where it starts talking about these angels sounding these trumpets. A lot of the same stuff we read about in chapter 8 and in chapter 16 seem to be what it's talking about here. Fire, brimstone, war, people fighting against each other, hailstones. Pestilence. I don't want to be one of those guys that try to say we ain't got nothing to worry about. But it seems that a lot of this stuff is pointing to this land over here. Are you saying, oh, well, uh, is scripture saying that when these things happen, this will be um, like the fulfillment of of revelation? Right. Revelation. Right. Yes. Yeah, definitely going to um, fulfill those prophecies. Absolutely. The only question here is where, where is it? Is it because I believe everybody thinks these are global events. Most of these events we read about in the book of Revelation, the apocalyptic events are global. A lot of people believe they're global, Mm -hmm. but maybe they are isolated to this land here. The more we read, the more (laughs) we learn, it may just be isolated to this land over here. Well, everything that everything that we've read so far seems to be pointing you know it's it's specific specifically it's talking about a place a place. One specific place well let's go on and i will be magnified and sanctified and glorified and i will be known in the presence of many nations and they shall know that i am the lord yeah when it goes down just like he says when it when it, and that's the that's the thing about the scripture you know a lot of people have a lot of things to say about the bible i believe this and i believe that but this is the only book on the planet that can tell the future. Mm-hmm. And so when people see this play out, just like it's saying here, then everybody who's left, all of the remnant, will have no doubts in our Father ever again. Mm-hmm. They will never doubt His word again ever. Right. But let's jump to the next chapter and cover a few verses in here because it, it goes on. Verse 1. And thou, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, Ross, Prince of Mesop and Tubal. So it's telling you here that Ross is Russia, I believe. Mm. Yeah, Gog is Russia. I believe it's saying it there in the, in the way the punctuation is, right. uh, is laid out. And I will assemble thee and guide thee and raise thee up on the extremity of the north. And I will bring thee up upon the mountains of Israel. Mountains of Israel. Right. Oh, talking about this land. And I will destroy the bow out of thy left hand and thy arrows out of thy right hand. And I will cast thee down on the mountains of Israel. Oh, by earthquake? That's the only thing we have so far that he's told us. So Mm -hmm. this earthquake is going to be what destroys them. What destroys their army. Mm -hmm. And thou and all that belong to thee shall fall. And the nations that are with thee shall be given to multitudes of birds, to every fowl. And I have given thee to all the wild beasts of the field to be devoured. And you hear about this, you know, how the birds are supposed to eat them. Mm -hmm. But... Again, it's sounding like they're doing this all over there. I, I Look, this is new to me. <laughs> you know, maybe somebody I keep saying it, somebody in the comment section will say, hey, he keeps saying it's over Israel. And then he keeps saying that it's over there and maybe they'll, you know, help me out. Right. Because that's what it looks to me. Yeah. You know, it looks to me that it's all about land and that land over there. All about somebody else's land. Right. Thou shalt fall on the face of the field, for I have spoken, says the Lord. This is Armageddon. This is how Armageddon ends. The, both sides are destroyed. Everybody is killed. Everybody dies. And the birds come and eat the bodies. Hmm. And I will send a fire upon Gog, and the islands shall be securely inhabited, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Maybe, maybe you're laughing because I had started off talking about these people were targeting you 
they were looking for you. Mm -hmm. And all they really found was the land that you desolated many years ago. Wow. And my holy name shall be known in the midst of my people Israel. And my holy name shall be no more be profane. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the holy in Israel. So he's going to wipe that area you're clean. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not going to be clean. You got all of these bodies to deal with. But those people over there will be destroyed. And the rest of the world will be free of these profanations. Mm -hmm. like, like we said, you know, in the beginning, many of those people involved in these are choosing their own Sabbath day. You have the, the Muslims, the Jewish community, and even the Russians who will be the Christians in this court, in this case, keeping their Sabbath days on Sunday, mm -hmm. basically just choosing what day they want, ignoring our father's sacred Sabbath day and how his calendar works. Right. People have just gone on to say, you know what? It's too hard. It's too tough. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pick a Saturday or Sunday and, and, and roll with that. Right. As long as I'm doing one. As long as they're doing one, not realizing that all of this is coming up on them over there in this world. So basically what he's doing is gathering all of these people in to this area to destroy them there. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. who says, you know, we can do it our way. We can choose the Sabbath day we want and we can, you know. Right. <sighs> That's sad. Well, anyway, let's go. On. Behold, it is calm and thou shalt know that it shall be, says the Lord God. This is the day concerning which I have spoken. The day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, again. So it's starting. It started back there when Russia first invaded Ukraine. That scripture was prophesied about. We did a video on it mm -hmm. talking about how the scripture was prophesying that the beginning of the fraying of the Gentiles was going to start there in the winter time of 2022. And we did a class on it. And within a few days that that prophecy was supposed to be fulfilled, Russia actually invaded Ukraine, starting this fraying of the Gentiles. That's what this is all about. This is the fraying of the Gentiles. They're going to basically destroy themselves in war. Mm -hmm. Let's go home. And they that inhabit the cities of Israel shall come forth and make a fire with the arms, the shields and the spears and bows and arrows and hand staves and lances and they shall keep fire burning with them for seven years so these are the people that survive over there mm -hmm. and they're going to burn their weapons for seven years what mm -hmm. weapon can you burn for seven years a nuke a nuclear a nuclear weapon will burn will produce will burn for seven years oh really absolutely mm -hmm. it will burn longer than that Mm -hmm. Burn forever. They'll never stop producing heat. Mm. I shouldn't say burn. Somebody else from the nuclear industry may hear. But yeah, it's, it's going to produce enough heat to provide energy for a lot of years. Many years. But it says here that they're going to burn them. I think it's nukes. But whatever it is, it says they're going to burn their weapons for seven years. And they shall not take any wood out of the field. Neither shall they cut any out of the forest, but they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall plunder those that plunder them, and spoil those that spoil them, said the Lord. Yeah, so revenge. Mm -hmm. So we got the weapons, you got all of their stuff over there. The birds donate all of their bodies, so you're left with all of the metal, and, you, and so they take advantage of it. The people that are over there basically take advantage of what's left. And it shall come to pass in that day. I will give to Gog a place of renown, a tomb in Israel, the burial place of them that approach the sea. And they shall build ground about the outlet of the valley, and there they shall bury Gog and all his multitude, and shall then be called the burial place of Gog. So all of these troops, all of these people rushing over there to Israel today for this war, that's where they're going to die. They're saying they're going to bury them there. And they're, they're not coming back. And the house of Israel shall bury them, that the land may be cleansed in the space of seven months. So you, you have this seven year period that has passed. Mm -hmm. and so now you have these people that are coming back to the land and they're they're basically cleansing the land for these seven months. Right. Because at this time now that the land is tainted, right? Well, 
Well, it would have been tainted at first, but you remember this was seven years ago that all of these people died. Right. And so the land would have been purified by then. Mm -hmm. And so now they're just cleaning it up. But as we speak today, um, October 9th, the land is yet yet tainted. Tainted how? I mean, because there are inhabitants on the land that's not really supposed to be, am I? Well, that's not a problem. It's it, mm-hmm. everybody. Right. But, so no, nah, I wouldn't say the land itself is tainted. The land is just desolate right now. Okay. The land, you could say that it's under a curse because it's desolate. No mm-hmm. one's supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. And this prophecy is upon it. So it's definitely a, not the place you want to live. Right. But it's not about the land. It's about Rosh and Gog and Magog getting this thing in their mind mm-hmm. that they want to come against Israel, that they want to destroy Israel. And because they don't know who Israel is, the only place they know to go fight against Israel is down there by Jerusalem. And they ha- are surrounding their mountains, trying to kill who they think is Israel, mm-hmm. trying to annihilate them off of the planet. Mm-hmm. And then they end up destroying not only themselves, but they end up destroying those people, like it says in Amos, who decided to create their own Sabbath day. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them of renown in the day wherein it was glorified, says the Lord. Yeah, so they're going to be burying the bones. And they shall appoint men continually to go over the land to bury them that have been left on the face of the earth. To cleanse it after the space of seven months, and they shall seek out. So this period that, you know, they come back, they got seven months to get to cleanse the land of all of these dead bodies, all of these dead bones. Mm -hmm. And everyone that goes through the land and sees a man's bones shall set up a mark by it until the burials shall have buried it in the valley, the burial place of God. Like I said, that's, that's where they're going to be buried at. For the name of the city burial place so shall the land be cleansed. <laughs> Let's go back and look at 16 in the KJV. Hamana. So it's saying a Hamana over here in the KJV. But what it's saying over here is that that Hamana is the burying place. Wouldn't be a bad time to become a conscientious objector. <laughs> All right, y'all. So this seems to be about the Sabbath day. And those who don't really understand when the true Sabbath day is. So let's change gears a little bit and let's talk about the celestial clock calendar that was invented with the help of the viewers in this channel. Because I personally believe that there are those out there that would like to know when the true Sabbath days are and only need a little help in understanding how our father's sacred calendar works. So y'all check out this calendar. So let's call Chris in to talk about the celestial clock and why it's so important as to helping us keep the appointed days. Well, the celestial clock calendar is not your average clock. This one's just for display as it's ticking a bit fast. But through the efforts of Coach in the Fight, the Elohim, and myself, we have learned that you can double up a clock movement to create a calendar. This causes the clock to move about 700 times slower Therefore, the second hand becomes the hour hand, showing 12 hours per revolution. The minute hand becomes the day hand, showing 30 days per revolution. The hour hand becomes the month hand, showing 12 months per revolution. This is because we have doubled up two clock movements, one after the other. You can download and print the faceplate for yourself, so that you can track the days manually with string and thumbtack. If you want a clock calendar for yourself, you can purchase one through the links below or go to coachinthefight.shop. Use discount code TROMPETS23 for a 23% discount. This sale ends October 16th. So now, Coach, let's talk about the new faceplate and why it's so important that we get it. This square represents the moon. It has four sides. Those points that stick out of the square would all, this is not complete. This is only draft one, but this, but they would also have points for the sun, the moon, and the stars. And each time one of those hands touched that point, it is important. Mm -hmm. When the minute hand 
touches the three, that's the third hour, and it's saying that it's time to pray. The third hour is the time to is the most important time to pray because that's the times when the kings take their seat. That's the time nine o'clock in the morning. We call it nine a.m. That's our time, nine a.m. That's when the kings put on their crowns to do their work. So that's the time when our father's people are expected to do our most praying is at the third hour. And then you also have the sixth hour, which is a time of prayer. And then the ninth hour. Now, the minute hand or the moon hand is the same. Each time that minute hand touches one of these triangles around the edge, it is indicating a Sabbath day. When that thing is over there, you should be looking out for the Sabbath day. You should be counting days if you don't know when the Sabbath day is. Mm-hmm. And that hand gets in that right there. Right. You immediately start saying, hey, ain't it the Sabbath day? Right. Little babies can look up and say, hey, hey, mama, ain't it the Sabbath day? You can have a Sabbath day clock that that was the only hand on there. And so you wouldn't be confused. That would be the minute hand. Then you have the hour hand, which would also have its own triangle because it points to the day of remembrance. And every time that hour hand hit one of them triangles, it's the day of remembrance. So there's no way you can get off track with this calendar unless you just forget about it and say, I ain't going to update it no more. I'm just going to let the battery run out or I'm not going to buy one. The minute hand Uh is the one for the Sabbath days. Uh The minute hand is for the Sabbath days. So when your hand is pointing over here, that's a Sabbath day. Okay. The second hand is the days of remembrance. No, the second hand is hours of is prayer. The, uh, yeah, hours of prayer because it is counting hours. So it's counting hours. That's counting your hours on your regular on on your calendar. Mm-hmm. That's counting hours. So it's the hour of prayer because it's counting hours. And so you have the third hour. This is pointing to the third hour. And then the hour hand, which is the short one, of course, mm-hmm. is the ones for the days of remembrance. Yeah, it's going to be short, so it'll point like right there. Well, it's not, not pointing quite right. It's almost it's telling you that you're almost at the day of remembrance. You got to get past December the 18th. And then once you get past December the 18th, you'll look for the first new moon after December the 18th. And you'll be at the day of remembrance. So the hour hand is showing. You. And so this here hand right here, that's the sun hand. Mm-hmm. That's the hour hand. Mm-hmm. And this is the moon hand. Mm-hmm. But it's so not moon, on there yet. OK. So draw your moon hand on it. Just draw it like a, what's your finger? The moon hand points oh, in to... In the middle and point to somewhere, yeah. The moon hand points to the Sabbath day. Okay, right there. Now, it's not pointing to the Sabbath day. That moon hand right there is pointing to a random day on the moon calendar. On It ain't pointing to no... That moon hand right there that you put is so... It's just... It's telling you about the day between the lunations, but it don't matter. What this is telling you with this moon hand that you just created right here, pointing mm-hmm. to the one, mm-hmm. is telling you that you... Got about three, maybe four days to a Sabbath day. Four days, about four days, and you'll so come up on Sabbath. So instead of right day. there, it should have went. Hold on, and go right here. Do you, do you? Okay, go ahead. So instead of right there, it should have went there. Yeah, to that one. Now, now what that's is telling what that's telling you. Let me, let me. Let me if what so that's, these hands should be different colors. The hands. Yeah. If you couldn't tell them easy. Yeah, that should be different. Yeah, different. All right, so yeah, that's your that's your moon hand right there, and you could have pointed it right here. The moon hand represents Sabbath days. Yeah, that's gonna tell you your Sabbath days. Sun hand represents um, hours of prayer. Hours of prayer, Mm -hmm. and the second hand. The star hand. Star hand. Yeah, got to stay consistent. The star hand represents represents days of remembrance. Days of remembrance. Well, I need to listen to this video again. So like Christian said, you can print off the faceplate of this clock and just use it as a paper calendar with a string or a pencil or something like that. This here is the latest revision to the draft that we're working on. And you can also get this on the clock that you request to have constructed at coachinafight.shop. This is a visual aid that will help you understand the feast days and in the year 2023, when many who didn't understand how the sacred calendar works were celebrating the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles in the wrong month in the year 2023. And that reminds me, guys, 
This is the year that we're supposed to read the book of the covenant during the Feast of Tabernacles, being the sabbatical year. The scripture tells us that this is the year when we're supposed to get a release of our financial debts and freedoms. So be sure you understand how this sacred calendar works, or you could be like those who did it a month early. All right, y'all, so there you have it. Again, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have your like button pushed. Please share this video or the information from this video. May our Father in heaven, hallowed be his name, bless you and keep you. May our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Father Abba lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In our Messiah's name, Yoshona HaMashiach, do we pray? Amen and so be it.